The job of the kidneys is to filter the blood. Basically, we get dirty blood entering and clean blood leaving, and all of the waste products that are taken from that dirty blood exit as urine. Words like dirty blood and clean blood aren't particularly scientific, but it is a really convenient way to think about it. If we look at the cross section of the kidney, the outermost part is known as the cortex. The next part is the medulla. Next is the pelvis. And the artery that supplies it is known as the renal artery. Renal is just an adjective which describes things to do with the kidney. It makes sense then that the blood vessel that leaves the kidney is known as the renal vein. And the tube which exits the the kidney with all of the waste products is known as the ureter. And the ureter connects to the bladder, and then from the bladder, materials can exit the body. Inside of the kidneys, we've got lots and lots and lots of these tiny, tiny little structures, which are known as nephrons. Inside of each kidney, there might be about a million of these things. They're really, really small. Let's look closer at the first step of the nephron here. And now notice that blood which is entering, which is coming from a branch of the renal artery, is coming through a blood vessel which is relatively wide compared to the blood vessel which is leaving this area. And that blood will eventually connect up to the renal vein. In between all of this is a capillary network known as the glomerulus. And what happens is, because the blood vessel that enters is wider, it kind of gets a little bit constricted as it's trying to leave after the glomerulus. So the result is we get really high pressure inside of the glomerulus. The area surrounding this is known as the Bowman's capsule or the renal capsule. And the high pressure forces material to move from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. Once the material is in the Bowman's capsule, it can then continue on through the tubule. But let's have a little bit of a closer look at how materials move across from the glomerulus and into the Bowman's capsule. Notice that there's lots of tiny little spaces between them. These spaces are really small, meaning that red blood cells can't get through. They're too large. Similarly, other large structures like proteins are mostly too big to get through. Smaller structures, however, little molecules like urea, they are small enough to get through. So urea will transfer into the Bowman's capsule. Now, you might be tempted to think that this is the job done. We've got rid of the toxic material that's gone into the Bowman's capsule. The rest of the blood can continue on as normal and re-enter circulation, and the job's done. Unfortunately, this isn't the end of the story. Because small things can fit through, Other small materials, which are quite useful, will also fit through and enter the nephron into the Bowman's capsule. Things like salts, glucose, water, these things are all going to enter. Now, this part is known as ultrafiltration, the movement of materials from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. So in order to get the useful materials back, we know there's got to be a next step. So we've got These materials now moving through the tubule. Let's investigate what's going to happen in a section of this. Here we've got the blood capillary represented in red and the nephron represented in green. And we can see in the nephron are lots of materials. Some of them are useful, some of them are not so useful. These materials can move from the nephron into the blood capillary via active transport. Notice that some of the materials have moved, some of them have not. In the blood capillary, we will have glucose, salts, and water being reabsorbed from the nephron. The materials that are left behind, obviously we've got urea, because one of the main purposes here is to get rid of urea. But what we will also have is excess salts and excess water. Your body needs salts and it needs water, but it needs to have these things present in the correct amount. So only the excess materials are left in the nephron to eventually leave the body. Notice here that there is absolutely no glucose left in the nephron. Your body works really hard to get glucose into its system, and it's not going to lose any of it through the urine. It's not going to get rid of any of this stuff. Glucose may be present in urine, but it only happens if there is some sort of underlying medical condition that causes this. Now, this whole process of taking back the materials that are needed is known as selective reabsorption. Don't make the common mistake of calling it absorption, reabsorption. It's very important that you get it right. 
Now that you know all the processes that go on, let's have a quick look at all of the labels that need to go onto the nephron. You already know the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule, often known as the renal capsule. And next, the two tube areas are known as the proximal convoluted tubule and the distal convoluted tubule. And they are just the parts that come before and after this loop that's in the middle. And this loop is known as the loop of Henle. The loop has two parts to it. There is the descending limb and the ascending limb. The descending limb being the part where the material falls down and the ascending limb where it rises up. Next is the collecting duct and this is where all of the material from the tubule is going to enter. From there it will go down until it eventually exits the kidney through the ureter and it can then exit the body. I'm sure by now you've come to realise that the kidney function is actually quite complicated. So let's try and represent it in a slightly different format and see if we can clarify all of the different steps. So dirty blood comes in and then via the glomerulus the materials get separated. We get filtrate which contains the waste material but unfortunately also contains lots of useful material and that goes into the tubule. This gets separated from the blood, but it's incomplete blood right now because there's still lots of useful material like glucose and amino acids and things like that, which are absent from the blood vessel. Through a process of selective reabsorption, material that is useful will be transferred back into the blood. And we've now got clean blood, which is complete. It's got all of the useful things. And this leaves behind in the tubule only the waste material. And that's the the urea, as well as salts that are in excess of requirements, water that's in excess of requirements, etc. This material is then going to leave the body. It's going to go to the bladder. And the material is now known as urine. And from there, it can exit the body and go into the toilet. Obviously, now the blood, which is useful, will go out of the kidneys via the renal vein, and it will go back into the circulation where it can be used like normal. Obviously, because this is quite a difficult topic, this is a place where people can quite easily lose marks in exams. So let's look at a possible question. The diagram shows a single nephron in the kidney. Describe the functions of the areas labeled X and Y on the diagram. And you should recognize that X is the glomerulus and Y is the tubule. So it's a four mark question. Let's see what you might say. At part X, the glomerulus, ultrafiltration takes place. Always name the processes. That's one of those kind of obvious points that people sometimes miss. Small molecules move from the blood into the renal capsule. So it's the direction of the movement and what is moving. They are forced into the capsule under high pressure. That concept of high pressure is quite important to how this process carries on. At part Y, selective reabsorption of useful molecules. Notice selective reabsorption. You'll lose the marks if you just say absorption. Give an example of the molecule that could be transferred. One of them would be glucose, but there's lots you could mention. And these materials are reabsorbed into the blood capillary. So that's saying that the useful stuff is then taken back to where it needs to be.